The first day we were there, we just drove out to the park. Seeing the glacier for the first time was amazing. It was much bigger than I expected and loomed over the valley. It was spectacular. Michael and I were blown away, but it was then that I first started to worry about the rain, as it seemed to never stop, even if it was only drizzling. We went to the visitor center and saw maps showing the retreat. In the 1940s, the glacier had covered the spot where the visitor center now stands. It's almost a mile and a half away now. The next day, we went back to the same glacier, Mindenhall, and hiked out the West Glacier Trail. We, let, we felt dumb at first, carrying big bags and having gaiters and hiking poles, but after a few miles carrying 30-pound bags, we're grateful for them. You have to take a less well-maintained trail branch to actually get out and walk on the glacier. It involves some climbing and jumping streams and such, but I'd talked to people that did it with no prior experience, so I knew it wasn't that bad. But carrying the extra weight, which was all our cameras, the helicopter safety stuff, like bear spray, um, really made it harder than just doing it with just ourselves. Um, we, we walked on the glacier, which was terrifying at first, but we've been told that during this part of the year, the danger is the least, and we had on ice cleats, thankfully. Didn't do too much making art that day because we got a late start since it was pouring in our first destination and this was our backup plan. Walking out to Herbert Glacier was practically a breeze compared to the off-trail hiking at Mendenhall. It was about five miles each way, but almost perfectly flat. Still a lot when you're carrying the 30-pound packs. We couldn't get too close to the glacier because there was a river between the trail and the glacier. We couldn't find a place to cross that river. When we went back on the last day of the trip, carrying waders this time, my muscles were so exhausted, couldn't even make the five-mile flat hike. We got closer to the end of the trail. We could feel the glacier coming up. It was getting cooler, definitely, but there was just also a sense of anticipation. Finally, on this one part, we are on a thin trail, hugging a cliff on your left, and a drop off to the river on your right. You come around, and there's the glacier. It's spectacular. When we set up the camera at Herbert, the helicopter realized the camera battery was dead. We hiked five miles carrying this and the battery was dead. We thought for a minute, but then we decided, okay, my point and shoot will fit on there. So we fit it onto the helicopter and flew it, but couldn't see very well. So we really didn't know what it was that we were seeing as we were flying it here. We were also pretty far away from the glacier. That's it from flying the helicopter. It was the best view we got just a couple of seconds. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. 
wind didn't exactly make things easy. Neither did the fact that it would spin. Flying a helicopter is difficult. We're gonna fly to Eagle Glacier today. Fly on an actual helicopter. Felt a little meta to have a helicopter on a helicopter. Michael and I were both terrified, but super excited. Talk to the pilot. He said he flew remote control helicopters as well as this actual helicopter. He said the remote control helicopters were more difficult in a lot of ways. You know, but the glaciers from above, amazing. All this is caused by the glaciers cut down over the years, ground up. Not even any vegetation had time to go back in most of the places yet. And my maps, the maps are so out of date almost as soon as you get them because the glaciers are treating so quickly. So even though we're over the glacier now, we expected it to be further down, the last map that I was able to use. And also the map of the valley wasn't very useful. It was a landslide that had collapsed and we couldn't hike down the valley like we'd originally planned to. This is rough terrain. People die here every year. We're as careful as we could be. We had a radio so they could come get us if anything happened. Very isolated though. I didn't see nor hear another person the entire time we were out there. Helicopters leaving us to do the work. I wouldn't let Michael go down onto the terminus of the glacier with me. I just felt like it was too dangerous. I was willing to risk myself, but not him. Most people actually die of drowning in a place like this. I couldn't help it, even though I knew that the water's full of glacial till. I had to at least try pure glacier water. It just tasted like water. This is when I flew the helicopter up. It was only up for a second before it got away from me and I caught in the wind. I couldn't feel the wind at ground level, but not far away from ground level and the winds picked up. There was us in the background. Out of all the places it could have crashed, it picked the softest, a big pile of sand. At least it didn't land in the river. This was a little terrifying when I started sinking up. It's glad that. Glad I stopped 
around my knees. Try two of trying to go to Lemon Creek Glacier. We planned to fly the day before, but it was so foggy that we couldn't go up. To this day, we finally were able to go up. I'm pointing out where I want him to land and where I want him to pick us up. This is a much higher elevation, so snow had already come down to the point that it was starting to cover things. It's going to make seeing the glacier a little more difficult but anyways. But we're still we're going to land. We're still going to do the mapping. That was until we realized that we were just being buffeted around. There's no way they could land. University of Alaska South let us borrow a kayak to take out on the Mendenhall Lake. It was so serene. Icebergs floating all over the lake. Couldn't get that close to the glacier because you never knew when one was going to pop up from underneath or break off, call the wave. We were there at the right time. The next day, the lake was actually frozen over. We still could have got through in a kayak, but it would have been crunch crunch the whole way. I was really glad to have dry suits, even if we didn't need them necessarily. Alaskans are a different breed. As we were hiking out the first day at Mendenhall, came across a couple guys trying to find out if we're going the right direction. They said, yeah, just walk over there and you drop off and you're almost out. We did. We went up. We saw the flag at the bottom of the drop off, which was about a 45 foot sheer drop. We climbed down it, slightly terrified, but we made it. It was not that bad, but looking up on it was less scary than looking down on it. On the next to last day, we went back to Mendenhall. The weather was a little nicer. We hiked just not very far, able to fly the helicopter. This time was the best flight. It really never stops raining there. This was a break in the rain, thankfully. As little as just a few years ago, this waterfall touched the glacier. 